My mouse is angry, but who cares? Welcome to the Pixel Scandal Nerdcast. Uh, my name is Kurt. Uh, I'm going to be sort of emceeing this a bit today. Uh, and we've got uh, some returning cast members. Gidget. Hello. Or Gidget. And Handor. <laughs> Hello. And we have a very special guest, uh, Mike of Nerd Cartel. Yay. How's it going, guys? Uh, Mike, what? Why don't you? Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about Nerd Cartel. What you guys do? Sure. Um, basically, what Nerd Cartel does is uh, we uh, feature a lot of uh, cosplayers and um, do a lot of media, a lot of coverage on, you know, nerd uh, uh, comic cons, movies. Uh, basically, kind of a media coverage site for everything in the nerddom. Um, we try to keep it pretty neutral and try to do a little bit in every different, um, you know, sector of nerddom. So um, we have a pretty uh, active Instagram and we're trying to build up our YouTube now um, just with content and stuff like that. So we're, we're kind of in our infancy stages, but I think it's going pretty well. Well, we know a lot about being in our infancy stage. Yes, so. yes we do. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, great. Well, moving on to announcements. Um, tomorrow is our regular game night, but we have no idea what we're playing. Yeah, uh, um, there, there may or may not be a game night, uh, tomorrow as it's Mother's Day. Uh, we still got to figure that out, but, uh, keep an, eye, keep, keep an eye on, uh, on our Twitch and, uh, for that go live, uh, announcement. Yeah. Uh, and coming up, we've got May 25th at 6 p.m., our Dungeon World Episode 2. Woo uh, hopefully more character development and world building and really getting into the story of what our dungeon world is going to look like. Yeah, that one will be an actual game, so you'll get to see a bunch of gameplay and stuff like that, not yeah. just character gen. Yeah. So. <laughs> and Mike, does uh, the Nerd Cartel have anything coming up you'd like to announce? Um, we will be attending uh, Comic-Con Revolution down here in Southern California. It's in Ontario. Um, and we have a graphically enhanced novelette coming out um hopefully by august so that oh, cool. is going to be uh available on amazon and stuff like that but as it gets closer i'll i'll let everybody know more more info and exact dates and stuff but uh yeah i mean we're expecting about an early august release that's awesome awesome yeah that sounds great and we'll definitely have to get you back on um closer to you guys can come on and and talk about it more and you know really give us a a good idea of what that's going to look like mm -hmm. yeah absolutely that'll be great yeah cool so uh what is everybody excited about anybody got anything they're excited about um i mean i'm pretty excited about some computer upgrades i ordered <laughs> <laughs> uh I, yay. yay new cpu it won't light my computer on fire to stream anymore um but yeah, that's I'm excited about that and doing a little computer upgrade because this is the first time I'll actually get to dig into the guts of my computer. Usually, I just buy pre-built. So, yeah, awesome. I'm going all in. Is, I think that's exciting for all of us. I mean, anybody yes. that's a business here <laughs> can say that when someone's you know doing a uh, computer upgrade, that's exciting, no matter who you're. Yeah, well, everybody has the input. I well, specifically, I think when you're playing like player games online or you're streaming together or whatever it is you're all kind of dependent on each other's computer systems to be at a certain level so that yeah. no one's the like one person who's like i'm sorry guys i can't play that game right yeah. um so it's i think it's good that we we're putting some money into kurt's computer yeah 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 so i'm excited that a tomorrow is mother's day so it's going to be all about me, which mm -hmm. is, I'm always a fan of days like that. And, uh, and B, that we get, finally get to go see Avengers because uh, on the Labrador tail update, he can finally be alone and not chew his own tail off. So now we can finally go see Avengers. That's exciting. I'm You're going to love it. I'm so excited. I've yeah. been trying so hard not to see any spoilers. I mean, obviously, like, that hasn't happened, but uh, I think. Yeah. I, I think the uh, I think I'm still going to enjoy it even with the few spoilers I've got. So, you know, I've actually managed to avoid spoilers for the most part. I'm actually I'm I'm pretty excited. 
I, I don't I don't really know. I mean, I've seen the 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 meme of people like disintegrating, but I don't know who gets <laughs> disintegrated. So who knows? I had I was having a conversation with um, my our teenage son yesterday, and he also has not seen it. But we were talking about the spoilers that we've heard, and we were just kind of going through the list of characters that people have told us die. Oh no! Um, and it's literally everyone, and so oh, we're yeah. like, okay, so <laughs> well, not everyone, right? Not everyone, right? So that's what we were kind of laughing about yesterday. Is like, <laughs> oh, you heard that person died. I heard that person died, but also this person and that person, and you know, so it's it was pretty funny to kind of have that yeah, conversation. This, this movie's definitely gonna take you for a roller coaster for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Didn't didn't you guys do a, a review of it over at Nerd Cartel? We did. We did uh, on our YouTube. Uh we definitely emphasize spoiler alerts. Uh so don't watch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you're watching this and we'll you want to see a review afternoon. of the movie, uh definitely head over to the Nerd Cartel YouTube uh uh station and have a have a look at their review. Yeah, right now we're working and we're trying to get subscribers because uh, YouTube won't let us have our own URL until we get at least 100 subscribers and, mm. and uh, get 24. So yeah. <laughs> we're definitely uh, trying to get people on there to, uh, you know, uh, just press subscribe. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you're following us, go follow them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. and we'll uh, we'll put a link in the in the doobly doo. Uh, on YouTube so that it can share uh, once this, nice. this gets on YouTube. Yeah. Um, right, cool. Something else I'm excited about is I am currently working on building an RPG game in Stars Without Number. There's no S on the end of that. Thank nope. you, Kurt. I keep calling it Star with Stars Without Numbers. And the, stars, I, the stars have math. The stars have math. Um, anyway, so I'm building a game in uh, Stars uh, Without Number. Now you've got me, like, nervous about saying it. Uh, but for anyone who doesn't know what that system is, it's sort of like a mashup between Traveler and D&D. So there's mm -hmm. skill rolls, but the dice are, I don't know, anyway. There's 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 a lot of dice involved, more so than I'm used to in uh, playing RPG games. So it'll be interesting to run a system that I've never played in mm -hmm. and never ran before. Um, but the game that I'm currently writing, um, have you guys ever seen the show Killjoys on... Uh, sci-fi I have not um, it's it's this it, it's kind of a sci-fi show obviously because it's on sci-fi um, very futuristic but it's uh, there's like basically bounty hunters that go out and get people and bring them back to the corporation to get in trouble for things so it's it's kind of along those it's like if that genre and like sliders mixed together. That's kind of oh, the game okay. I'm currently writing. <laughs> so there's some time travel involved. It's future tech. Um, so yeah, that's I'm excited because that's kind of the, the game I'm currently writing yeah. right now. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. excited to play that game. Yeah. I can't say too much because Kurt's going to play in it. So yeah. Yeah. So right. how do you separate yourself from look, I can't even talk to I'm on a dating app. Okay. Sure. I can't. I cannot talk to to two women at the same time. <laughs> How do you involve yourself in a in a scenario and so in role play? Like I'm I'm to the point where I feel so entrenched in the character that I haven't even that I'm only for the first time in my life. You know, I'm so entrenched in that that like how do you how do you keep those two and, and not be like uh you know, accidentally say that this is a birthday of somebody and it was the birthday of the other person. They're like, that's not my birthday. What are you talking about? You know, and get yourself in that situation. <laughs> well, I mean, fortunately, I've never had to date more than one person because <laughs> I got married real young. So I didn't have to, the stakes aren't that high. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. That, yeah, that's true. It's the, it's, it's the only analogy I could think of. <laughs> no, but I, I think I think what you're getting at is like in in role playing, how do you separate out what you know as opposed to what your character knows? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, and then especially in multiple games, like you're mm. you're you're leading one, and then you're you're delving into another character, like almost at the same time. 
Right. right. Well, and really, I mean, I'm playing in a game that we call What's in the Box in for that Kurt is running. Um, I'm also playing in a game called uh, Nat, which uh, Night Sun is running. And oh. we're playing the Dungeon World game, and I'm going to be running a game. So it's we're, we're kind of in... And Kurt plays in even more RPGs than that on a on a semi-regular basis. So we're, okay. we're kind of jumping around to different characters all the time. Um, but I think it definitely took some time for me as a new role player, you know, like 10 years ago to get used to that, to yeah. what, which character is which character. And I think something that Kurt really pointed out to me that helps is if you embody the character, like it has a voice or it has a mannerism or it has like a, a personality quirk or whatever, it helps you remember like, oh, okay, this is the character that I'm playing right now as opposed to like the four other characters that I'm also role playing as on a regular basis. Yeah. I it gotcha. helps to keep it separate. So like for you with Forrest, like you're you're kind of a grumpy, you know, annoyed guy. But if you were to play a different RPG, you would want to play like a silly guy or, you know, something completely different. So it's easier for you to kind of keep track of yeah. the different and I, characters I would... that you're embodying. Yeah, for sure. And I would, I, you know, the way you put it too, it, it makes me think that you would almost have to develop just, just by doing it, doing something consistently that you would develop that type of brain training that it would take to yeah. mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think it takes practice. And I mean, it, it's gotten me the game that Night Sun and Kurt, Kurt are running. They're two separate games, but they're in the same world. And so, in one game, I'm Isabel, and in the other game, I'm Roxy, and in one game, I'm like a paladin, and in the other game, I'm a brothel owner. Like it's, but it's <laughs> in the same world, and so we do sometimes have to sit there at the table as a group and say, like, okay, add a character. Does do this character this? know this piece of information, or does that character know this piece of information? Because Katie knows all the information, mm -hmm. but like, you know, it's it's like we're we're playing the in the same world with the same environment but yeah. two different people. So it's, it's gotten even yeah. more confusing in the last year than even in a normal RPG setting. So I, I don't typically have any trouble keeping my characters separate, like keeping them what they know and who they are separate. But um, I, do, I do forget like minor details or like when things happened. And I'm not a very good note taker. Like some people take extensive notes, right? Because they just, they know they're not going to remember. So they just take a lot of notes. I'm not a good notes. note taker, so I have to kind of remember because <laughs> there's no notes. Um, yeah. But like, I, I see it the same way as if you can remember what a character in a book did, like the difference between two characters in a book, um, or like the two characters in a movie or something like that. Like you can you can remember when you go to see the sequel, like oh well, this character did this, so that means this now. Yeah. Um, it's it's just thinking of them like a, a fictional entity, you know. Okay. Like if well, you read a book. And, and to what sense. Kurt said, I, I, I am kind of the chronicler of our of our <laughs> RPG group. So I sit and take copious notes of like, okay, in this game, we went here, we did this, we talked to these people, and this is the information we got. Um, so that when we sit down at a future game and someone goes, wait a minute, didn't we know something about this? I can go back and say like, oh, yeah, this is the information that we got from that person that one time to help right. keep it straight that like, what does my character know? What does Katie know? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so on and so forth. So, yeah. But before we get too lost in the weeds. Right. Uh, Matt, didn't you have something you were excited about that you wanted to mention? Um, yeah. So uh, a few times we've mentioned uh, Kickstarter and some things that we've been backing. And because I completely lack the emotion of shame, uh, <laughs> I came across a uh totally obscure kickstarter that was a pillow designed to replicate a uh voluptuous behind and <laughs> i'm like why wouldn't i do this and i and counting down all the reasons why i wouldn't i couldn't come up with any and then i and i ended up with this extensive list of all the reasons why i should so well, i should have a pillow <laughs> Absolutely. So I totally donated sixty dollars to uh, this Kickstarter, uh, <laughs> and it was called the Buttress. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 
Is be, it still open? Uh, no, it's not. It's, it is okay. closed, and I will be getting my uh, buttress pillow uh, in, in August. Hopefully, around the same time, <laughs> I'll be getting an awesome new uh, uh, comic from our new friend, Mike. I'm yeah. that. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to hear the review of the buttress. Oh, I'll, sure. bring yeah. I'll bring it on. Definitely. I, yeah. well, I want to see it. We need yeah, a review. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sincerely excited to see what this thing, you know. <laughs> awesome. Well, Mike, do you have anything you're uh, excited about that's coming up? or? Well, I mean, Avengers was something that really blew me away, so I'm still kind of reeling over that. Uh, <laughs> definitely looking forward to all the movies coming out uh, this year, uh, Solo, D DP2. Um, it, it, this was a great year for movies. I mean, I'm a huge movie buff, movie goer. So for me, oh man, it's been a pleasure to review a lot of these movies and even TV shows uh, with, you know, shows like Cobra Kai and stuff like that coming on. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It's uh, that was I binged that all in one night and <laughs> it was um, it was an experience, you know, so I'm really happy that, uh, you know, this year was filled with tons of great entertainment, um, especially geared towards the nerddom. Uh, which, I mean, let's face it, I mean, nerds are taking over, you know, so uh, really happy about that and really happy about the way uh, things are going with all that. Yeah. yeah, nice. I agree with all that 100%. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, what's been, what's everybody playing? I mean, I think, Matt, you've been playing a lot of WoW. <laughs> yeah, you, you jumped in after us and surpassed us. Yeah. So how's that feel? I, uh, well, I feel miserable. Um, <laughs> I feel much like a, uh, you know, um, like I should be going to meetings. And <laughs> uh, I now have two level 110 characters. Um, on Horde. On Horde. Uh, of course. I would have any, on Horde have any, any other way. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's, uh, I have so much to do, and it seems like I have a lot of time to do that, but um, every day that passes, and I spend, not, I'm not even exaggerating, I'm spending six to eight hours, I think probably a day right now in World of Warcraft, that's just going out the window, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of time. Yes, it is, and well, and the thing is, is in order for me to get flight, I have to get... Uh, um, I think revered with all the uh, rep mm -hmm. in the Broken Isles. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm playing massive catch up with ice because I switched from uh, Paladin, which the new Paladin is is the I usually play holy. I've been healing for years for raids, and I am not. I, I wasn't excited. Now this has nothing to do with the fact that I was wearing five pieces of strength gear. Now, so for those of you that know, you know. That's not how that works. Uh, that has nothing to do with it. It was the yeah. the feel of how playing you, Holy Paladin. You were prod holy. Let's face it. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 I know. Uh, <laughs> I think I did that for, you know, I think three hours, and I I I I said no, and I logged on to my mage, and started having a blast playing uh, Arcane. Um, yeah, it Mage was fun. for the win. Yeah, uh, I've You're now going got from all pallies to all mages. Yeah, pretty much. Are, are you and I going to dual mage when we get to the new content? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's going to happen. I have I I went from uh, zero zero uh, or zero out of eight hundred skill trades to I'm looking at about seven eighty five and seven fifty for my tailoring and enchanting. Uh, I've done all of the Argus <laughs> quests. I'm nice. literally to the point where all I have to do is go through each zone um, and do quests. So I've been putting in nice, work. Nice, man. Nice. When does the next I, uh, expansion come out? August. That's in August, August. as well. Everything's, Everything's in August. Everything's in August. Yeah. Everything's yeah, in August, guys. I, I, I yeah. better catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you get a Stay. free boost when you buy the expansion. Yeah. Well, no, I do, I do have a level 110. I just uh, haven't really messed with them. So... Uh -huh. I need to, uh, I finished my, my quest line, my pally quest line, um, 
but then I just kind of like gave up when I saw, you know, all the grinding, every daily grinding and all that stuff, the dailies and all that kind of, I don't know, kind of mm-hmm. got to me. Yeah. Are you on no. Horde or Alliance? I'm on, actually I have both, but my 110 is on Horde. Cool. Uh, nice. Well, I don't want to sit here and announce uh, names and servers, but um, the, <laughs> the best thing that I found was doing that stuff solo becomes such a, like you say, a grind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you can get a couple of friends that are consistently around, especially the guy with flight that already has flight, like I don't have flight. Like yeah. him? Uh, huh, no, uh, uh, Rando. Oh, Rando. Mm. Oh, Rando's yeah. your taxi? Because Night Sun's my taxi. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll port and him where he wants to go, but he's got to cart me around once, you get there. <laughs> once we get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and now that Discord's allowing um, to share playlists through uh, yeah. Spotify, you just put on a decent playlist, you know, mm-hmm. hang out with a friend, and jam out and knock out those quests. It's a, it's a much different experience being able to do that with a buddy than it is yeah. having to do that solo. Well, we all have yeah, to I, find some friends. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, you can come, we, you can come we, join the Pixel Scandal Guild. We do have a that Pixel was, Scandal Guild, so. Really? That was yeah. the pitch. That was the pitch, honestly. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. what, uh, what's, what server are you guys on? What server? Are we on Thorian it's Brotherhood? Thorian Brotherhood, Silverhand, and I believe yeah. one other smaller guild that have merged. Or, I mean, uh, servers that have merged. Server, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, totally. Yep. So yeah, I was you know, I was playing druid and got to sixty and I was hating life, so I switched back to mage and now I'm almost fifty. So yeah, what do you, <laughs> Making that what do you climb. play, Mike? What's that? What do you play? I, I played. Uh, what, what do you mean? Just video games um, in general, or class? Uh, or class in, WoW. in, in, in WoW, yeah. Oh, I'm a, a paladin. A retribution paladin. Well, I was ret pally for a while. Now I'm 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 kind of leaning more towards. Uh, Towards prot, towards you know tanking and stuff like that, which is a whole different beast for me. So mm-hmm. I had to, I kind of uh, started another pally just to kind of learn how to tank, so I won't go into those you know level one ten you know uh, dungeons and just completely just screw everything up. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of it was a learning curve for a little bit because I have ne- never tanked before, and it, I mean it's a huge responsibility just like healing is. I'm sure you know. Healing, you know, your very pivotal point of the game. Um, so yeah, slowly learning how to how to tank correctly and and how to maintain aggro and all that. And that was the biggest thing for me. But um, I'm getting better at it. I I don't know if I trust myself just yet to go out there on a you know high level raid or anything. But um, you know, it, it it's 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 work in progress for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Tanking and heal and. Just so you know, to take a little weight off your shoulders, it's always the healer's fault. Yeah, so, always. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no, no, we established this. No, it's if the DPS yeah, dies, it's their own fault. <laughs> if the tank dies, it's the healer's fault. And if the healer dies, it's the tank's fault. So everybody's got somebody that's their fault. We said. Okay. <laughs> we said. That's why I like DPS for so long. It's no DPS, I, never. A right. Problem. Like, I, I love the idea of, of tanking. I, 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 tanked a little bit on on my paladin on the alliance side but i i feel like i've got some like ptsd left over from when we had dial up internet and we first started playing wow because i it, our oh, computer dude, was, was so shitty and our internet was so slow that like i was barely i could barely manage being a dps and like just hanging out with our guild and being like <laughs> i'm just going to follow you but like four rooms back so that my computer doesn't crash when you get to the next pack or whatever you know and so i've got like ptsd left over from that and so i i'm scared to like actually tank or heal in anything higher level because i'm just afraid i'm gonna screw it all up <laughs> yeah and it, it is it's a big responsibility and just just to forewarn you mike there's um you're gonna have a couple extra keys uh to to be worried about when it comes to tanking paladin because uh my buddy he's playing a paladin and it's a lot like holy the the button management and the number of uh blessings you know blessings of freedom blessing of sacrifice yeah just paladin is infinitely known for its mass amount of uh um what sort of looking for you guys uh options uh, buttons yeah resource just, management 
just resources and stuff like that. So cool downs? when you cool downs, yeah. Tank is gonna be a a whole new world. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Matt. Yeah. Just Yeah, it it's been exciting so far. So I just hope I can stick with it and get better at it, you know. Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All Honestly, right. Well just... let's let's move on to uh uh that we played last week. <laughs> hey, it's my job to on, t- on task. I, 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 I'm... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about WoW all day. We can talk about WoW all I know, day. I know. Uh, so last week we played on Sunday uh, as our our weekly game. We played Monster Prom, uh, which was super fun and very exciting. Uh, Kurt, you want to talk a little bit about what exactly that game was? Sure. I mean, you guys were both there. Uh, so Monster Prom is a competitive dating sim. Uh, where you try to get a date to the monster prom. You play a monster, and you, you go to Monster High. I think that's the name of the, the high school. And where everyone is over 18, because you're trying to fuck them. And yep. uh, so you got to keep your shit together. Uh, <laughs> and and you, you'd go through, like, dialogue trees. And, and it's it's just the, you know, do you do this to this person or that to this person? Uh, and you try, yeah, <laughs> and you, you, like, build up stats over the course of... The, the short game was 90 minutes, so. Whoa. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, yeah, the long game said 120 minutes plus or something like that. But yeah, it's it's four player, so, and it, I don't know, I haven't checked to see if their online multiplayer is working yet. They were supposed to have it at launch, and it wasn't working, so we actually used, um, do we, I think we just streamed, like we screencasted through Discord or something like that. Right. Uh, and then one person controlled the mouse, because it does couch co-op or... Uh, it's supposed to have online co-op. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you, if you like dating sims or you like just like laughing with four people, uh, check it out. It was really fun. We're definitely going to play it again because you can discover new endings and stuff, uh, and it has like little stats. So. Yeah. And Matt, didn't you play like a literal pile of shit? Uh, yeah, I believe that's what he was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what he was, but he looked like poop. Yeah, no, we, we questioned like it jelly. Out. Yeah, well, we yeah we we questioned it at the at the beginning, and uh, I think we made a joke about it. And yeah. at I don't know twenty at the twenty five thirty thirty five minute mark, we realized that the image of me popping up, you know, uh, narrating some scenario, uh, there's two two pieces of shit on my back on my shoulder, <laughs> just chilling uh, there, like little Mister. Yeah, Hanky. one of them. Just one of them. Yeah, one of them was combing my hair. Yeah, that's nice. right. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So, yeah. needless to say, uh, the odds were stacked against me uh, when we started that game. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the piece of shit did not find love? No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that didn't watch. Yeah. Hey, Kurt, I'm going to step away for just one second, okay? Sure. All right. We'll we'll keep talking about uh, Monster Prom and stuff. Yeah, so I played a uh, fire demon from hell who was trying to date the prince of hell. Uh, I I think it went pretty well. I think I think uh, I think we made a love connection. <laughs> <laughs> he, he went to prom with me, so I mean that's yeah. Uh, I I had a bro date. Yeah, me and me and Scott the werewolf because uh, I was like a Frankenstein monster type person. Named Mr. Pickle. Uh, yeah, and and we had a we had a we had an awesome bro date where we went on an adventure. We got lost in a dungeon before we went to prom. Yes, yeah, yeah that yes. was right. Yep. Scott and I. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Katie tried to demean our love. I wasn't demeaning your love. <laughs> I thought I thought so too, Kurt. I did. Yeah. I I am super supportive of your of your of our love, bro love of your bro love. Was, nice son also played love. with us, uh, and he won the money game. Yeah, uh, yeah, he got all the monies. But he got screwed at the end. He totally got screwed at the end. I feel like I feel like he wasn't making as strong of a love connection as he thought he was. I like, feel like he... v- Vera's a hard sell. Like I, yeah. dating a Gorgon is always tough. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a metaphor for what Gordon went through with Vera is a metaphor for my entire dating life. <laughs> <laughs> Where you think you've got an in, you think you're doing well. And oh, then yeah. you take that step, and they're like, "What? No, you're like a friend." How yeah, dare yeah. You? Three, three months in, off a dating site, and they're like, 
Well, I'm not looking for anything. Wait, what? <laughs> Why are you on this site? Why are you on a dating site? <laughs> what happened? Okay. <laughs> You're just looking for friends. Get off the dating site and go Get like... <laughs> <laughs> You're not our target audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, while we wait for Mike to get back, I'll, I'll definitely plug our uh, social media and our email. If, you, uh, if you'd if you like to engage with the show, you can find us at, at pixel underscore scandal on Twitter uh, or um, uh, pixelscandal.com. If you'd like to email the show, you can email us at pixelscandal at gmail.com uh, and contribute to the show. Get your... Get your questions answered or your topics considered. Yeah, please do that. Yeah. Welcome back. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. Awesome. Well, just in time for us to move into what we call our spotlight topic. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about um, being inclusive in kind of the nerd community. Yeah. So, Kurt, you want to take us off with gatekeeping? Sure. So uh, there's a term. Uh, called gatekeeping. For the uninitiated, gatekeeping is defined as the activity of controlling and usually limiting general access to something. Uh, in our case, that's going to be uh, limiting access to <laughs> uh, the a thing or a community around a thing uh, or like access to people who enjoy a thing, which seems really silly when you think about it. Um, but, uh, I mean... You could also this is this also brings up words like real nerd or true fan or any other way to like make someone feel less than so that they're not or or like they're not part of the the in crowd. Um, and it I don't know it just seems like a really silly thing to do, but it is something that happens a lot uh, in nerd culture and in uh, like gaming communities and uh, like nerd communities, especially around comic books and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of the, <laughs> I have. Have you guys had any experience with with gatekeeping in your in your lives? Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't, should I go first? Yeah, go <laughs> for it, man. Go for it. Um, well, because you know, a couple times you guys lost me with with the RPG thing. You know, um, I've never played an RPG, so, um. You know, I always, you know, sit quietly, respectfully, and, you know, uh, and I'd love to ask questions, too, because I love to learn about new stuff, but sometimes I feel like, you know, if I go to a certain, like I, we were talking about yesterday, I'd go to a certain comic book store or a certain place where it has a lot of these hardcore uh, players, um, people like me sometimes find it intimidating because it's like, you know, they just look at you like you're some weird creature, so... <laughs> Cause you're not a part of their clique, you're part of their crew. Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's something that we actually, uh, put on our, um, nerd cartel website. We, we basically made it pretty clear that, um, you know, uh, we feel that a lot of, uh, new nerd sites are, um, focusing too much on specific properties of nerddom or, a lot of people find it intimidating to really engage. You know, that's why we kind of started our thing. So that way people can have a little taste of everything in a very digestible way. So yeah. um, I, I, I think gatekeeping is wrong. It's just like, I mean, we, a lot of us face bullies as kids and stuff like that. And what's the difference at this point? Mm -hmm. You know, like we're the, we're the bullies now. I mean, uh, yeah, I, right. I, I, I think we need to definitely bridge that gap between, you know, extreme nerdism and people that want to get into that but are need that need that need that uh, special hand just to, to let them know hey it's cool we'll teach you you know that's really all it's all about yeah, yeah. For sure yeah absolutely i think that part that's kind of our goal here with pixel scandal as well on just we're you know last week star wars day like and movies and mm -hmm. kind of all the things that make up all of our our interests that kind of fall under that that you know nerd mm -hmm. label um but it's just mm -hmm. the things that we're interested in that we talk about and and you know matt of of all of us of pixel scandal matt's the only one who hasn't really played rpgs until our first dungeon world game last week and so you know we've been really encouraging and trying to help him feel like he's included and and not like 
you know, he t he'll tell us things like, you guys just said a bunch of words that I have no idea what you guys are talking mm -hmm. about. And then, like, we feel bad because we're not trying to exclude him or, you know, we're all talking about RPGs and it's like, okay, let's try to get you in the conversation and explain to you what we're talking about and make you feel like you're part of the team instead of like, oh, I'm the one person who doesn't understand. And I feel right. the same way for myself. Like I play video games, but I don't play them as often or as many of them as I think the rest of the Pixel Scandal guys do. And so my like library of, of video game knowledge is smaller than the rest of them. And so they're very inclusive with me and like, oh, well, it's, it's like this one game you've played. Mm hmm you know, when they're like, oh, we're all going to play this game. And I'm like, well, I don't know what that is. And they're like, oh, it's like this other game you've played to help me understand what's going on and make, not make me feel like, oh, you don't know what this video game is. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we all try to be very right. inclusive with each other and support each other and, and make sure that we all feel like we're, we're supported in our group. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. going to have to try one of these RPGs with you guys one of these days. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. We'll have to get you in one. You come guest star. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think you can get to a place, and this happens to me a lot, where you get to a place where you you know so much about a topic, or you research a topic so much, or you, you live in circles that talk about it so much that you develop a lexicon, you develop a, a a language that doesn't make any damn sense to anybody outside of that like tiny mm -hmm. circle. And so when you talk to new people, you end up saying things that you know they have no idea what you're talking about, or the the you know the colloquialisms of that group don't translate to outside of it. And you forget to, to explain, like explain things or, or use basic language uh, to make it seem more welcoming. Cause I understand like it can be, it can be really uh, intimidating when you hear people talking shop <laughs> and you don't know half the word or what, what they're talking about half the time. Um, and and so that's something like I try to work on, or I have to work on it, is to make sure I'm using like simpler language. And uh, yeah, it, she's nodding along because this is definitely something that I do all the time. To, all the time, and I mean, I I we live together, and he we consume a lot of the same entertainment, and we play a lot of the same video games and RPGs and and stuff. But when he's off on his own, he watches and consumes YouTube videos of other gaming things that I'm not watching and he comes home and, and will like talk at length about something and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And we're part of the same circles of, of nerd culture, right? But like, <laughs> even he says things that I'm like, honey, I, you've lost me. Yeah. Um, and so if he's doing that to me, it, you know, it's obvious that he's Definitely doing that to other to people other and it's not, you know, not intentional. It's, it's just, like you said, it's part of, when you consume a lot of something, you use that kind of language to talk about. Yeah. So, and I, I think there's, I mean, there's the two, two types of it, right? There's the not being self-aware enough to know that you're excluding someone by your language. And then there's intentionally excluding someone because mm -hmm. for, for whatever reason. Yep. And I think those are, those are two different places uh, to start from. One is obviously a little more innocent, but, they achieve the same goal ultimately of excluding people for for not knowing a thing. It's more like a microaggression, <laughs> right? I'm yeah, I'm constantly uh, using microaggressions in my language. Yeah, and I think a lot of those. I actually have two examples of those those very things, and I think that's the kind of the uh, the one of those is like the snake in the grass, right? It creeps up on you. It's not something that mm -hmm. you're you're intentionally doing. So. The the one example of that that I just recently experienced is uh, I just recently got really into um, RC cars and one tenth mm. specifically one tenth scale cars um, and rock crawling uh, and in within the RC community there is a group of people who you know casually uh, have RC cars right they they have the styrofoam plane or they have the um uh the less expensive less viable uh rock crawler or whatever um i and then i discovered well there's actually classes within rock crawling in rc there's the class one which is the most extreme it's basically like taking a truck off of the lot of a dealership throwing a little bit more aggressive tires on it and saying, I'm going to take this rock crawling. 
And that's mm -hmm. what class one is about. It's all about having all of the components that would exist on a normal vehicle and seeing what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I found out that if you want to be, well, what it what took place was there was an upsurge in RC uh, uh, activity. And a lot of the people who have been into this kind of hidden gem that is class one rock crawling <laughs> uh, behaved as, as they had this elitist mentality mm -hmm. and they removed themselves from this what would otherwise be a very fun and active and exciting community and now yeah. they're doing their own thing they have their own rock crawl instead of instead of going to the local rc shop and hanging out mm -hmm. there and, and talking and doing all that stuff they've all left because there was this upsurge of new people who didn't understand what do i have to do to a new rc card to be you know to make it a class one car what do i have to do you know what type of things can i do with the with the uh, suspension and and um linkages and all this stuff to get more steering or more more clearance and and get the, the center of gravity lower and all this stuff and mm -hmm. Those class one people, uh, or the people that are using the class one vehicles, um, you know, they don't want to explain that to you. They don't want to, you know, and I, that's the, uh, that was my first experience of, of joining something for the first time and feeling absolutely excluded mm -hmm. to the point where the group absolutely left and made their own thing because there were a lot of new people. Yeah. Um, and on the twist side of that, I've actually, I've actually been, uh, I'm actually guilty of this as well. Uh, raiding in World of Warcraft years ago with close friends and, and building that elitism and mm -hmm. having a certain expectation to ha that people would meet certain requirements to be a part of the group that we run each week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. It, it's it happens and sometimes it slips up on you and sometimes you're the victim and 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 i don't know that there's a a specific answer but it's certainly uh mike's uh group's approach and i think what what uh pixel scandal wants to do is definitely discuss those issues and explore and be able to talk about that and hopefully uh, uh accidentally stumble upon the uh the cure all if you could mm -hmm. in a in a you know utopian uh <laughs> right kind of nerd world what what is the solution to that yeah i'm wow, hey uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i i think gatekeeping comes the the that type of gatekeeping where they're specifically excluding you either because they think you're too casual or they want to keep a certain type of people out that I think that comes from a, like a perceived sense of superiority. Like they've based their identity on being good at a thing. Yes. And, and allowing new people into that makes it seem less exclusive. Like they feel less important because there's more people doing the thing or yep. know about the thing. It's like the hipster, you know, you're not cool enough or, or, oh, well, I knew about them before or whatever. Right. Uh, I mean, and it, that comes out in, in all sorts of weird ways. Like um, when someone comes into, tries to come into a community or, or expresses to someone that they're interested in a, in a, a fandom and the other person immediately begins quizzing them. Right mm -hmm. to prove, oh well, prove to me that you know or you're you're a real fan, right? And I think this happens disproportionately to to women and to people of color, uh, just because for some reason, mm -hmm. for a long time, uh, most nerd community, most nerd things were sold strictly to white straight dudes, uh, or or with a thirteen year old white kid in mind, and so. There's no like they, there's this expectation that people other than them aren't gonna understand it or 
aren't a real fan or something like that. And and I, I think that's one of the reasons that uh, representation in that sort of media is, is really important um, and why uh, getting getting more more women and more people of color into into the films, into um, comics and things like that. And and marketing to those people and making sure that like the marketing shows those people uh, because you don't like don't breed a culture where little white kids think that they're the only ones that can enjoy a thing. Yeah. And I, I think we did that for like, I don't know, all of the 80s and, and most yeah. of the 90s. And, and hopefully we're coming out of it now. But I, I mean, I personally, I don't think I get to say whether we're coming out of it or not. Like I, I'm not in I'm not one of those marginalized communities. So I, I, I don't know. Like, it's just not there for me. Yeah. Um, I, I know that for myself, um, y- you know, I mean, it's such a, it's such a, I don't know, niche thing to, to care about, but I love Dr. Who. I'm a Whovian and I, I love Dr. Who. And um, as a gift uh, from grad school, I was given a, a, a clutch bag that looks like the outside of the TARDIS. So it says police box on it and it's blue and it, it looks like the TARDIS and it's the purse I carry uh, you know, pretty regularly and, and pretty often I have men comment on it and go like, Oh, uh, nice Dr. Who purse. And if I even for a second go, what, or, or like, Hey, Dr. Who, if I even go, wait, what? Cause I don't realize I'm carrying that bag. I definitely get the reaction of like, Oh, she doesn't know what she's carrying. She doesn't know what that police box bag means, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and and the same thing with video games. You know, I, I think women in general feel like we can't say that we're actually a woman when we're playing a game, whether it's WoW or whatever, because we're going to, oh, well, she sucks or she's not going to, you know, if, oh, for some reason I'm not top DPS. Well, it's because I'm a girl and I'm not as good at video games as my male counterparts or whatever it might be. Um and I, I think those kinds of misconceptions have, still happen a lot in our, our community, our community of nerds. Mm-hmm. Um, and even, I think, within our own group, I was um, telling Kurt yesterday that even within the Pixel scandal from time to time, people make comments like, say things like, oh, good for you, where if someone else in our group had done the thing I did, they would have been like, yeah, cool, man. But because I'm a girl, I get the like, oh, you did that thing, good job. But, you know, you guys wouldn't have treated each other that way. It's because I'm a, a woman that you guys did that to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, I appreciate the praise and I appreciate the support, but it's also that's that's that slight, you know, yeah. microaggression that we talk about where, um, you know, I, I replaced all of the components in our son's computer mm-hmm. and the response from our group was like, oh, good for you. I knew you could do it. But, you know, if Kurt had done it, you guys would have been like, oh, okay, cool, man. Right? So, like, that's that... <laughs> That's that line of like, you know, I'm I'm just as capable as the rest of you with whatever we're doing that's part of this community. Um, but it's those those small things happen because I'm a woman. Not not to say that you know they're you guys aren't calling me names and I mean, Hander, you called me names last night, but um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> In your defense, I was also calling you names, so it's fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's how we show show we care. Uh, no, but like it's not like you guys are mean to me, but it, it is those little things that show that there is some type of um, you know microaggression happening because right. I am a woman and and in our I, nerd community. Yeah, I, I certainly think that women in in gaming should definitely get less loot on a consistent basis. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, everybody. <laughs> Relax. Uh, I know you well enough that I know you're kidding. So for Matt's sake or for Hander's sake, uh, he is kidding. So so he wants as, all the loot. It doesn't matter if you're male or male. Yeah, right. G- yeah, gender has nothing to do with it. So so as someone who can end up being an ambassador to a community, right? If you are knowledgeable knowledgeable about a thing and you want to encourage inclusivity and you want to to welcome people, where's that line? between um, being like the the over over being too nice microaggression and being too uh, technical like you don't want to treat your audience like an idiot obviously but you also don't want to lose them in the weeds so finding that finding that sweet spot where you're 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 explaining enough 
that a new person doesn't feel left out, but also not treating them like a moron, right? There has to be a balance. I mean, I remember when I first started playing World of Warcraft, I was, I was a super noob. I was doing noob things all the time, you know, and this oh, yeah. was back, back in the vanilla days, you know, when you can only get to level 60. And, uh, man, like, I felt like such a dork, you know, because I couldn't, I wasn't getting it, you know, but then I had a person, would would be patient with me they get on the you know the the headset with me and walk me through a lot of things and that helped out immensely because i had someone there to kind of hold my hand through the process not saying that everybody needs their hand held through you know video games or rpgs or stuff like that because a lot of people might get it right off the bat but then a lot of people like me are like kind of like okay i i might need you to explain this to me a couple times and then i'll be cool you know Mm -hmm. It's just having patience, really. I think patience is the biggest thing, and patience and tolerance um, mm-hmm. to to address the whole uh, uh, the woman and and people of color thing. Um, I think with the people of color thing, I think Black Panther answered everybody's call on that one. Uh, one of the highest grossing movies ever. Um, mm-hmm. First time I've seen you know gang members cosplay. To be honest with you, I think that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> it was very exciting to see. Um, them excited about something we were excited about you know and yeah, um, yeah. And, and that's a, a in the urban community you really like that's more of a, a, a tougher crowd you know like they, they they really don't allow their inner nerd out too much you know mm-hmm. so for them to really nerd out geek out and love this movie it was it meant i mean it, it really meant a lot um and as far as the the woman thing goes i i don't know i guess I guess uh, people just need to check out Twitch because a lot of girls are killing guys in video games on Twitch, man. And they're they're just murdering it with numbers and views and likes and Mm -hmm. follows guaranteed. The girls have the higher end on the follow and like, uh, spectrum. So, um, I, I I think things are starting to balance out and the people that do think the way that you guys described are, are starting to dwindle away. So, um, I see a very, very, uh, very promising future for, for this, for the nerddom, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, my professional opinion, if you're wanting to, to walk that fine line between, uh, over explaining and, you know, being condescending or microaggression of whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just asking questions like, Hey, uh, do you want to get in on this? And if they're like, uh, yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. Cool. They just open the door for you to help explain what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Or if, if someone, you know, looks like they're struggling, but you don't want to call them out for it, ask them like, Hey, you all right over there and let them ask for help. And I think that, that we as a nerd community need to get more comfortable with asking each other for help and not just waiting for somebody else to open a door for us, which Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people in, in our community have some social issues so that, you know, sometimes that's difficult to do, but definitely, you know, just be friendly and Mm -hmm. open that door so that when they do step through and go, yeah, I do want to be involved. You know, you're standing in the the gaming store and you hear the RPG nerds talking about it and you're like, Oh, I want to, I want to get in on that. If you see people hanging out around, be like, Hey, did you want to get in on this? Or, you know, I mean, just be more opening, more open, Mm -hmm. opening, (laughs) be more welcome, you know, be, be more inclusive. Just, um, don't shut yourself off from other people because of your own, your own insecurities about talking to other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody's familiar with the, you know, the, the, the comic book guy from the, from the Simpsons, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's the trope that you're going to expect. Um, and yeah. I, I think, I think we, I've, I've found a lot more inclusive comic shops these days. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've, I've been in a lot of comic shops now. Staff is welcoming. They're well lit. Like it's, it's as if they learned how to market to humans instead of just <laughs> like cave dwellers that have rolled out from. But I mean, even I, I've experienced walking into a comic book shop and asking about like when the new Star Wars comic started up, I really wanted to get in on that. And I tried to go to the local comic book store that had been around forever. And the guy treated me like I was a leper, right? Like if you basically, if you didn't already have a pull list, he didn't want to talk to you. Uh, and it was, I mean, it, it felt like, you know, walking into the comic book store in the Simpsons. And then I, since then I've gone to other places where like, you know, it's nice. Everything's clean. The, the staff is super, is super helpful. And so I, I hope that we're going in the right direction. 
Um, but that's definitely something that you should think about when you're out and about and you see someone struggling, offer help, right? Uh, but yeah. don't force it on them, right? Definitely, uh, there's there's an article, and this is definitely something I want to talk about uh, in a future episode. Uh, um, uh, I forgot her her uh, first name. Um, Vincent Baker's wife, Meg Baker. Uh, she has a sh she's a sex education um, person and a game designer, and she wrote this great blog post about how to talk to people. Um, and be, she had someone at a con in Italy come up to her and ask, um, I, I really want to go speak to this woman. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan, but I don't know how to approach her. And so she wrote this whole post on how to, how to approach someone in a, an equitable way, how to begin a conversation and leave an out. That way, if the person doesn't want to talk to you, they don't feel trapped. Uh, like how to use your body language to, not make, to make someone feel comfortable and to give them a way to get away if they don't want to talk to you so that they can engage back if they want and not feel pressured into the conversation. Um, and I, I definitely think that's something most nerds could benefit from uh, is, is how to talk to a stranger that you, you, especially when you feel like there is a power imbalance, uh, mm -hmm. like either you look up to them or you think that they're prettier or whatever it is, uh, or they're just more charismatic and you don't know how to approach that person. Um, that's definitely something that people could benefit from. And it, using those tools when you're approaching someone who looks like they're struggling or making sure that they have an out from the conversation and not, not don't corner them. Don't like be too aggressive. Sure. Uh, perhaps yeah. we should share a link or something to that article. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely put it in the thing on YouTube. Uh, but yeah. I, well, and I know, I know that for Kurt and myself, when it comes to RPGs, um, I try to get new people to play all the time. Um, not necessarily because I don't like playing with people I play with, but because it's always nice to get new people and, and play with different groups of people. And I ran for more groups of new people in the last couple of years than I have for our regular gaming group. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think a big part of that is, uh, those people came to me and were like, Hey, we want to get into this thing you know, how do we do that? And I was like, I'll run a game for you because mm -hmm. that's the best way for you to try this out is if someone who knows what they're doing shows you how to do it mm -hmm. and then you can go off on your own and decide if this is something you still want to keep doing or not. Um, and so I think if you're part of a community, whether it's RPGs or video games or, or um, c cosplaying or whatever it is, uh, if somebody comes to you and asks, hey, how do I get into this? Be open to talk about it. Be ready to to say like that. Well, this is how I got into it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what else would you like to know? <laughs> I, and I think there's an overlying tone here, and it's a. I think everyone could agree. If I it, it's whether you have the social anxieties or you know a lot of those things that um, tend to tend to lend themselves a lot to the nerd culture, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, um, appropriate or not. Um, or accurate, uh, I think the overlying tone is it's about humility, right? At the end of the day, it's about mm -hmm. being, having humility. Uh, and it, it made me um, think of all the other places where, for instance, joining up, uh, when, I, when I very first started doing uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I was so worried because when I very first got into my first gym, like, your your ideals mm -hmm. of what it's going to be like going to the gym right mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, i was terrified to go to the gym absolutely and, yeah. and i'm still intimidated it took it took a lot of courage yeah yeah definitely yeah and sometimes and sometimes it absolutely does ring true going mm -hmm. to the gym you will have those people that are like you know uh you're overweight or you're skinny or whatever you're not them right you're not mm -hmm. them you're not mm -hmm. uh the guy that's benching you know 480 and and deadlifting you know 600 pounds so you definitely do run into that but in the same token mm -hmm. you know you can find sometimes i don't know it just made me think of all the places that that, that actually in culture in general how that takes place and it is it is it's it's common and 
Uh, Absolutely. I done... mean, this, this doesn't just happen in our nerd culture. It happens in all the different niche things, whether yes. it's sports or, or the gym or, you know, race cars yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. And I almost feel like, um, just the last thing, I almost feel like what Mike had said, we're almost a, a little bit ahead of that curve because mm. of things like uh, Black Panther and uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman's huge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we're we are like trending a little bit towards ahead of that 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 curve in in nerd culture. When you said Kurt, I hope that we're you know, and obviously you don't. We can't say for certain because we only know mm. what we know, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but I feel like I can safely say as an opinion that we're doing a we're doing a relatively good job and uh, moving in the right direction. We're moving in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's because we're we're more 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 socially tolerant and socially accepting as a as a whole than other other groups or other, you know, other fandoms and stuff like that. Um just real quick about the the gym thing that you guys were talking about. Um, I do have a friend who's part of a group called Muscle Geek Physique. So, mm. and they, uh, he's actually doing a panel at a Comic-Con Revolution this next week. Oh. And um, super cool guy. Um, focuses on kind of, I'm actually going to help him out with his, uh, with his workout videos and stuff. So kind of exciting for me to, to kind of jump into that. But um, he definitely awesome. wants to show the, the, the nerddom that doesn't feel comfortable going to the gym or mm-hmm. doesn't want to, because the gym is intimidating. Believe me. I mean, when I oh, went... Yeah. When I started going back in the day uh, and I was, you know, overweight and I didn't, I just, and I saw all these guys that were, you know, ripped with six packs. I'm like, oh God, <laughs> I look like a putz in here. I don't know what I'm doing. But then I started making friends. I started, you know, just kind of talking to people and being like, hey, can you just kind of sh- spot me here or, or show me how to use this? And would you want to play, you know, racquetball with me, you know? And then you develop this kind of a gym family that you're like, okay, I'll see you next, you know, next Thursday at nine, you know? And then. You guys meet up again and stuff like that, and you just build this 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 uh, this habit to go to the gym, which which was cool for a while, but then I kind of fell off the horse. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, so it, it is possible, and I I love the, like just exactly what we were talking about before. I love it when people are, you know, inviting, tolerant, and 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 helpful. You know, like not you know, and and people just not be afraid to ask for help. You know, when they need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, that about wraps up our time for today. So, Matt, have you written us an outro? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are uh, we are Pixel Scandal. We're not Nerd Cartel. He's Nerd. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we're Pixel Scandal. You can find us uh, at pixelscandal.com or pixel underscore scandal on Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to email the show, you can email us at pixelscandal at gmail. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you on the internet. Oh, Mike. Oh, I did. I didn't hear you guys. I cut out. Oh yeah. Uh, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Instagram slash Nerd Cartel on Facebook, and then the Nerd Cartel dot com is our is our main website, which I'm still kind of working on. I got to work out some tweaks, uh, but up and it has uh it has current information on there so um yeah if you guys want to check that out uh that'd be great thank you so much for having me on the show i I really appreciate it uh it's been really a fun time talking with you guys and i hope to make it back uh, on the show soon yeah thanks for joining us this has been really fun yeah thanks for joining thanks a lot bye internet bye